What's up and welcome to Ahead of the Curve. This is your host, Jonathan Gellner, and thank you so much for joining us. This podcast is powered by Stick and Ball TV, the baseball and softball streaming platform. If you're a coach with a growth mindset who wants to get better, then Stick and Ball is just for you. With weekly videos from some of the top softball and baseball coaches in the country, it's absolutely a go-to resource. Check them out at stickandball.tv or on the Stick and Ball TV mobile app. Today we're back for part two with Micah Franklin. And on this show, we discuss how to get guys ready during preseason, how to handle conversations during the season when guys are struggling, and how to help players commit to game planning and having an approach. You're going to love this episode with Micah Franklin. Once we once we start getting ready, you know, spring training, getting guys ready for that, and you you mentioned you know doing things as as game like and and having variability within practice and testing things helps them with that. So I'd love to just skip forward to you know the spring training side. So your swing work is done, and, and we can play uh, some of these some of the other videos that you sent. But how do we help players to flip that switch of now we're no longer focusing on on our body, we're focusing on the guy who's trying to you know, get us out because not that it doesn't matter in the off season, but now the true test is, is the guy on the mound. So tell us a little bit about how we flip that script with, uh, with guys during spring training or, you know, whenever they're starting their seasons, maybe preseason mode. Yeah, I, I would say in spring training, it's a, it's a, you know, little delicate um, because all of a sudden it's game modes and no matter how many swings you took in the off season, all of a sudden now there's another pitcher on the mound and you're in spring and everything you worked on. Um, is it working? Is it not working? Um, a lot of times we have players that come to us and from wherever they were working in the off season and all of a sudden everything they worked on is not working. That's a tough. So we have that situation where we got to get the player back on track um, and we need to slow it back down before he can speed up. And then we have players who are ready to go. And those guys are, man, they, they worked on the right things in the off season. Um, they're efficient. They're to the ball. Let's go, man. We can speed up with those guys. We can get them in game mode. We can challenge them. Um, I love um, the Giants saying, hey, hey, practice dirty, play clean. Love it. That's, I'm a big believer of that. Um, we want to slow down the game. We always tell hitters forever. I've heard this. Hey, you got to slow down the game. Well, how can we expect the hitter to slow it down when he practiced really slow and then the game is fast? The game needs to be slower than practice, you know, in my opinion. So those are two different things. So if that player came in and he's a little messed up, we we do need to slow it down for that player. We got to get him back moving the right way. Once we get him back moving the right way, bam, we get him right back on that track. Oh, really good. And and that goes back to that trust piece too of, man, they, and balancing that because they may have spent all of their entire off season working on this one thing. And if we try and change it day one without giving, you know, giving them the the opportunity to show it, I mean, I, I don't mean to, you know, throw the Astros under the bus, but uh, the JD Martinez rule, right. I mean, he spent all off season trying to do that and, you know, he goes out and I think he went like over 16 with 12 K's and then they cut him and, and, I mean, it's, it is what it is. And, and I, I don't think that you can fault that, but that's also uh, maybe one of the ex- exceptions to the rule uh, with that. But yeah, having that feel uh, a big, big deal. And okay. So uh, with that, I, I've been really digging into the mental side and a lot of this lends itself to it. And a lot of it is listening and trying to ask the right questions and really digging into, you know, players, why, and, and how we can, you know, where they're at, what their goals are truly uh, all lends itself to that. But, but how do we, how do we, how do we, how do we help them with the mental side? Because you're, you're dealing with guys who literally everything is on the line. And so getting them to, you know, understand the context of locking it in pitch by pitch. uh, I don't, I don't know if you've got uh, just like a set philosophy that you really like that you try and train guys with in the off season and in the preseason as well. But I just love to hear, hear you work through, you know, with the, with the mental side of things, because it's so much mental. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts behind, you know, how you're helping guys with that. Hitting is so much mental, more than mechanics, more than so many things. Um, Here's the greatest understanding a hitter. 
first you have to understand a hitter, you know, not understand how the swing works, but understand the human emotions of a hitter. Ask any hitter, would they rather have three line drive outs right at somebody or three broken bat hits? I ask this question all the time. You know, people who they understand the importance of line drive hits and when they put algorithm together and when we talk about exit velocity and all this other stuff, it leads to, yes, we get that. But when I ask that question to players, every player takes the three broken bat hits. And that is one of the most important things we have to remember when we're talking about hitting and the mental part of hitting. Um, you know, you get in the box and that pitchers, they're nasty. They're absolutely nasty. So we need to believe in ourselves. First of all, you know, we, we have to, hey, I believe I can do this and understand um, I, I can do this in the box. And that comes from the relationship with the hitting coach and the coaches and the other players. Um, it's tough to to hit. And it's it's an understanding of remembering Everything I just said about we would take those three broken bat hits over three line drives. And when we get a player to change, um, whether we're changing a, a, a way to hit, whether we're trying to adjust something differently, whether this pitcher has um, nasty stuff on the mount. Well, it's all in that mental part of, of how we how we assess. So each pitch to pitch, um, how do we handle that? Do we have a system to step out? Um, reassess ourselves, um, and then let's go compete again. So I don't, I don't know if that I kind of went off script and a little bit off, but oh, well, you know, yes. I just think that is the human factor before we start breaking down too many swings. Where's the player at? Understanding the importance of is he in the right frame of mind? Because hits lead to more hits. Sure, three line drives lead to. Three more line drive outs lead to, I need to change something, you know, and they don't need to change anything. They're doing great. Just like when a hitter's doing bad, he may be doing really, really good, you know? So we have to remember all these things that it's very important to keep that hitter in a great frame of mind. No doubt. I really like that. With with that, um, I want to flip to some of these uh, in season videos that you sent. I'm assuming they're in season because they are uh, <laughs> they are on a field, and yeah. so I mean, you know, you may have access to a field, uh, but I think this would lend it more towards uh, that side of training. So if you'll give me just a second here to share uh, the PowerPoint again, we'll go with this uh, this top left video or this video on the left here. That's a little bit. Uh, squ squeezed down, uh, but you're on your knees and you're throwing balls overhanded. Uh, so explain what this drill is. So I, I don't have the video right now, but I'm, I'm guessing this is um, Blaze Alexander. I'm guessing there's a screen. Um, yeah, it's it's there. You go. So there's Blaze. So we have a screen. Blaze was over rotating a little bit, and they we talked about rolling over, right? Now, we gave him the opportunity to hit the ball up the middle the other way, no problem, free. And then we said, hey, I need you to hit line drives right over the screen. Not pop-ups, fly balls, but line drive right over that screen. Now, we combed it off so we have 15, 20, 25. We know exactly where we're at. So we worked our way back there to around 25 on my knees, and I'm throwing the ball about 95. And he's just, as you can see, it's calm. It's, it's controlled. His body's moving. You know, look. I was talking about being in the red zone. I don't need to be in with footballs on, you know, and they, they have the red zone channel. They flip to the game because, hey, once they're in the red zone, you can score. Same thing with hitting. If your swing's in the red zone, hey, you can have success. You don't need to be on the one-yard line be perfect. And this is kind of the drill we're doing right here. He's controlling himself. He's not over swinging. He's in line drives. Hit a couple of those balls out that day. Um, just with that nice, easy, compact, you know, efficient path. Cool. And what about this one on the right here? Oh, yeah, these are always fun right here. Um, <laughs> right here, you know, we, we do two different ways with this. So we'll have um, a rounds where we'll say, hey, um, three fastball, two curveballs, one fastball, you know, two cur uh, two fastballs, two sliders or whatever we're doing. But here we have, we call it you, me. 
And we can do a lot of different things with you and me. The hitter doesn't know what's going to come, whether it's going to be the curveball, the slider, or whatever we're working on that day, or the fastball from the pitcher. We always focus on the fastball unless there's a round. We say, hey, we got a 2-0 count, and this guy likes to get back in the count with hanging curves. All right. So that group, we group players in, together in batting practice, you know, the big power guys versus the line drive guys, slap guys. Well, we do our best at, at grouping those guys. So a lot of times I like the you, me. I like bases loaded, one out, ninth in it. Bases loaded, one out. And the reason I like that is because we need to put the ball in play. You know, put the ball in play. We got a chance to score a run. You take strike three, we're out of the game. He has no idea if it's going to be the fastball or the curve. So he has to be ready for the fastball but still keep his hands back, be efficient, have balance enough to still be able to put the curveball in play. I, I really like that drill. So for the audio listeners, I, again, you can find these videos on stickandball.tv on the Ahead of the Curve channel. But you're throwing BP, and you've got a guy that's behind you that's simu- that's that's right in your release window that's uh, on a ju- – I think it's a junior hack attack that's throwing yeah, sliders. yeah. And so you're trying to time it up and it's either one or the other. So you're talking about before you throw it, it'll be you or me, but you're simulating the motion and it's either coming out of your hand or coming out of the machine in the same window with you throwing a fastball and the machine throwing a curveball. That's really good. Yeah, I know. It's one of my favorite. Um, when the hitters first do it, they're like, ah, no way. And then they start, Kidding. they start doing it. They start hammering balls. They're like, man, I can do this. Okay. No, uh, And you said you use this for a two strike drill quite a bit. Love it for two strike drill, um, you know. But we, you can also use it for hey, two zero. We're sitting fastball, no matter what. Never miss the fastball. If you if you end up taking the curveball, it's fine. Or we may do it where hey, there's a guy that loves to get back in the count throwing hanging curveballs. So okay, mm-hmm. we're sitting hanging curveballs. Let the fastball go. Sit the hanging curveball every time. Cool. So you're developing an approach within the drill sets. Yes. <laughs> really good. I, I can't wait to yes. dig into that with you. I've got one more video here for you. And this one, you've got, I think, two machine, two machine drill here. I'll play it. Go yeah. ahead. Once again, we got two. This is these sequences. And I'm going to tell you, for especially low A ball players, rookie ball players, and those guys, they know what's coming. This is no secret here. We say, okay, we got a high spin rate um, um, coming fastball. The next pitch is going to be a curveball. So we just alternate. Fastball, curveball, fastball. And let me tell you, when they have to go from one to the other, it's tough. You know, for so it, it all of a sudden high spin rate. Oh, curveball, they gotta stay back. They get it, but it it's it's something with pitch recognition, timing, all of that, adjustability, all of it comes into play, even though they know the, the pitch is coming. It's not a secret. They know what's coming. So with that, do you have to fight a lot with them being in between on both? Yes, that's exactly what happens. Once they get the slow curveball, they're late on the fastball. Once they get the fastball, they're struggling with either late or early because they're trying to sit back on the curveball early. And instead of saying, hey, I'm always going to be ready for the fastest pitch and ride out. That's when that forward move comes right out. And, you know, we like you said, if we just put their legs spread out, put a board in between them. They'd hit both pitches with no problem. <laughs> Yeah, no doubt. So uh, l- let me let me ask you this one. So if you were uh, if if I was the one that was struggling with these uh, being in between on timing issues, uh, how would you how would you coach me through that? And uh, I, I think, you know, most coaches would would be able to say, hey, you're you know, you're in between or or whatever. Do you have any you know checkpoints or just different things that, that you like to say uh, to really get them to understand what you're seeing with how they're feeling? Uh, that's, you know, that's a really, really good question. It's, hard, um, it's a hard question. It, so it I is. Apologize a, it is. No, answer. it's a great question because it came up every day this year, especially um, when players would first come up at the beginning of the season or players first mm-hmm. come up. And it's the first time they've had curveballs for strikes at fastballs, 95, 96 miles an hour with good spin. And, and, it would be, you know, tough for them because every player can hit it at this level, can hit a 99 mile an hour fastball, no problem when they know it's coming, you know. But once the curveball or the changeup or an off speed gets thrown for a strike, it's in the back of their mind. And we talk about that mental game. That's the mental game. Yeah. You know, that's the belief in yourself and understanding, hey, this is the first time you've seen it. It's all right. We're going to practice it. We're going to practice it. We're going to go. We have our, we have our um, open cage. 
And that's when we're going to do some body work and we're going to work on, on, on that and getting our body in the position that it needs to be in, that it can organize and still hit pitches and understand and be able to not freak out when that happens in the game. And then we're going to have practice. We're going to refine our drills. We're going to have those drills you just saw. And then right before the game, I'll go dirty 30 and pitch in a cage and just change up sliders, curves and, and ball strikes and swing decisions. And eventually if we do that enough and you trust yourself and you're always ready for the fastest pitch. So I always hear people say, Hey, be ready for the fastball. We've been ready for the fastball since our dad threw batting practice to us in the backyard. You know, we don't actually have to think about being ready for the fastball. We just need to time up. And that starts in the dugout. You know, it starts on deck. It starts the third hitter. It starts, um, you know, when you're watching the game, you're timing up the pitcher, his fastest pitch. And that's when you're in your gather load and then to your forward move. And you learn how to ride that out and have adjustability. And that is where the trust comes with the player, you know, and it's hard. Some of those players, no matter what you talk to them, what, no matter what you tell them, they, they couldn't do it. They, it's just really hard, really, really, really hard. And that's when you put your arm around them and, and say, hey, we're just going to keep working on it. As long as you're willing to keep working, I'll keep here. I'll be here with you. Well, how much of that is fear of swing and miss? Because I, I think that, the, you know, kids, especially, you know, the teenagers that we're all working with uh, have that element of I don't want to be on pitching ninja, ninja swords uh, <laughs> section. Uh, but but it does happen, especially whenever they're competing against guys that, you know, they they know them, they're from the area or they follow them on Instagram, whatever. And so I, I think that's an element of it, too, of, well, I don't want to be I don't want to swing and miss on a slider if I'm thinking fastball. So I'm going to try and sit both, which you you know, you chase two rabbits. You don't catch either. And so I think that that's a conversation that's that from a coaching standpoint that I've had to have, too of if you're sitting fastball like dead red fastball and they throw a slider that is just filthy and you swing and miss over the top you didn't see it like okay that's okay like <laughs> pitching's hard or hitting's hard and pitchers are good and it, that's going to happen but uh then just getting them to approach that in a in a in a little bit of, of a different manner and I don't know if that if that's helpful I'm maybe for one or two players maybe for all of them I don't know but I know that that's that's a conversation that I've had to have over the last year or so no, without a doubt. Um, the player needs to understand, hey, she get fooled on a slider. That's OK. You're, you haven't seen it. You, you haven't seen enough of them yet, you know, at this level. It's just fine. But let's not miss the fastball when it comes. You know, let's let's hit the right fastball when it comes. And eventually we'll practice enough that you'll start seeing that slider. And if we're in a hit to take mode, like you just said, hey, I believe we control the zone with the hit to take mode. You know, and that's how we do damage. Control the zone, hit to take to do damage, you know. So if you're questioning yourself, it's going to be tough. You lose that little split millisecond, and guess what? We foul back that fastball now that we should have hit in play. That leads to us now chasing off speed or chasing fastballs up or whatever it does. It's usually the pitches we miss that we should have hit is the reason we got out. Yep, there's no doubt about it. So how do you help players? Because you, you know, you're in high A, you have teenagers, and so, uh, and and even with with guys, you know, in, in double A AA or triple A or whatever, they may have relied on an, uh, their ability without having to game plan, having an approach, uh, and digging into that side of things. So I guess let's start with approach. How do you help a player to understand? just how to have a good approach. We talk about that all the time. And I know it's cliche of I have an approach, have an approach. It all is dependent on, you know, what the player is good at, what the pitcher's throwing, what the situation is and all of these different things. Uh, but how do we have them, how do we help them along with that process of, you know, self-discovery of what a good approach for them is? That's another really, really good question because, um, you know, every level versus amateur level versus, you know, um, pro level, you know, we, we know everything about this pitcher. We put it out the night before. We, we know their whole rotations. We know um, their whole roster, um, everything. Then they go up on that day. They can, you know, they get it the night before. But then on the day we have it. Hey, this is where he likes to throw his first pitch. This is where he likes to, you know, we know everything about it. So if we know there's a guy that, you know, you're right-handed hitter and he's heavy first pitch fastball down and away, well, 
you know, we probably shouldn't be looking um, ball one, two, first pitch, you know, or if that's your weakness, well, then, hey, you know, you're going to have to make them come over to play it. Or, hey, my approach today is I'm going to figure out how to make balls, you know, five more ball three because I like ball three. So maybe you get on the plate, maybe you get off the plate or, or just different things um, about planning your day out and having an approach and believing in it and going up to the plate and sticking to it. And that's, you know, that's a, that's a tough thing for young hitters, young hitters um, sometimes have an approach. And then as soon as they get in the box, they forget their approach. And how do we get them back on track? You know, we have little keywords for that to get them back on track of what they do. And, you know, sometimes they take and get out of their approach on one swing and we got to get them right back into that approach. So, you know, that question is different for every single one of your hitters on your roster that you coach. And you need to let each hitter feel how much he needs to know. You know, how much do you want to know about this pitcher? How much do you, you know, not need to know? It's, it's always important to know what, what his go-to pitch is, what his out pitch is, and, or, you know, hey, this is how they approach you. He, he may be really good at doing one thing, but, you know, against you, you know, he's not going to do that because, you know, you're strong on that. You know, your hitter's really strong there, but he's really weak on another thing. They keep pitching that way. So having an idea where they're um, – you know, we're cutting off one side of the plate because the guy's not very good to that side of the plate or not. You know, that's what, we're, you know, all those things are extremely important. Um, one thing is I, I for hitters, you know, we may say, hey, this guy is, is really good to his arm side. He struggles glove side. Well, he throws one ball out of 10 to his glove side for a strike. Man, that hitter is so mad at you <laughs> because he's like, man, you said he can't throw his glove side. Well, no, yeah, yeah, you know, that's going to happen. It's OK, you know, but. Until they can do it consistently, let's let's not worry about that too much. So, again, it goes back to the mental side, in my opinion, when we talk about approach and, and that hitter. Hey, let's let's get him to believe in what he wants to do and know what he wants to do, because sometimes you can't force an approach on somebody. You got to let them um, believe in their approach. No doubt. Well, I am uh, I am out of in season questions, but I'd love to to hear. Any other things that that we we should we didn't cover that we should have covered, or any other things that come up uh, during the season that you really think that that you want to hit on, or you want to make sure that that, that you know coaches that are listening uh, talk about this or uh, keep this in mind? Is any anything like that come to mind? Yeah, I just want, especially parents and and, and coaches, especially in the amateur world, um, you know, hitting is really hard. And on the Twitter world, we can get fooled because we always show the we always show home runs. We show great swings, you know. Um, I always say the best hitters probably have more rollovers than they do home runs, right? But we don't show those um, or the pop ups or got jammed. We don't really show that. So their timing would be off. That maybe they're uphill. Maybe they're off their backside. Maybe they lose the you know the ground, the force, and. You know, and, and always be careful when when some guys say, hey, that's what I teach and see he's doing it on that. Well, that's that's that swing. The timing was right. These are big league hitters and understand that hitting is really, really, really hard. And your hitter doesn't need to be perfect. They need to be efficient. They need to help the team figure out how to help the team win. You know, at the end of the game, do we score more runs than the other team? Not did we have the best swing today? Oh, for sure. So the last question that I want to leave our listeners with, uh, besides that one, which would have been a great uh, ending to the show as well, <laughs> but I'd love to hear, uh, I'd love to hear just, uh, the, I'm going to call this the legacy question. It's it's kind of uh, corny, but if you had to leave our coaches, you know, there's young coaches that are listening, and there's one thing, uh, either advice that you would give them, or a book to go read, or just uh different things in general, if you had one thing to tell one listener who's listening right now that you could leave a legacy uh, telling them this, what would that be? Well, on the book, I really enjoy it. Old school, new school. Um, and I, I just think that, you know what, there was hall of famers when coaches didn't know all they know today. And we have to remember that the game is the, the, the final um, proof of that player. 
not slow motion camera and we make him perfect in the cage and then he goes in the game and now that that perfect swings dragging um it's not efficient um maybe he's got to over exaggerate in the cage but it's not perfect so someone might say oh he's doing this wrong but that's what helps him in the game so the game is the decision maker so always remember that we have to perform in a game that kid has to be mentally ready, physically ready, prepared, and confident. Keep him confident. Keep his mental right. Because he's got to perform something that's really hard. Hitting a baseball in today's day. Thank you for listening to Ahead of the Curve. If you enjoyed the show, please consider leaving us a rating or review wherever you are listening. I also wanted to remind you that you can find the video portion at the AOTC channel on stickandball.tv. Have a great week.